Good evening. We are here with Dr. Cairo Diomedia, um, who is running for Washington State Governor. Would you like to go ahead with your two-minute introduction? Sure. My name is Cairo Diomedia, and I'm running for, uh, this, uh, for governor for the state of Washington. I uh, just want everybody to know that I'm not a professional politician. My feelings about the office, all elected officials are elected to serve the people, not the other way around. During my time, I'm not dictating to the people. Law should be enacted without seeking the advice of people. What I said was, law should not be enacted without seeking the advice of people. So it's time to move away from past bias endeavors and allow the people to provide insights on what's best for them. The main reason I chose to run for governor is the homeless and drug addicts that are left on our street without care. The homeless drug addict is an affordable housing issue that everyone's problems, regardless if anyone cares to acknowledge it or not. This is the richest country on the planet. We should not have homeless or drug addicts on our street. Not now, not ever. Homeless, uh, some veterans come back from the world to place to, to, know, to no place to call their own. Homeless veterans need more psychological support and a place to stay. After all they were willing to take a bullet for us it's time for us to take care of them foster parents need more psychological support so they can continue to serve those children that need their support that's my introduction great thank you so much for that uh now we'll move into the four prepared questions robert's going to post them in the chat um and then uh those responses are two minutes apiece and um, so we will ask if Layla would read the first one. So I'm unmuting you, Layla. I also put a Hi. timer. Yeah, that's what you just heard. Good. Uh, let's okay. see. One, two, three, four questions. OK. okay. Ready? <laughs> Ready? Yeah. Washington State is, is facing a significant decline in revenues due to the impact of the corona riot. Will you pledge to veto budget cuts to needed public services? What taxes would you like to ra would you look to raise in order to deal with this crisis? Wait a minute. Let's see if we can get this right. Uh, Washington is facing significant decline in revenues due to the impact of coronavirus. Will you pledge to veto budget cuts to needed public service? What taxes would you look to raise in order to deal with this crisis? That's a very interesting question. I would not raise property tax, for sure. Okay, because people have had enough with that. Uh, let's see, where would I want to go to raise the taxes? Uh, I would probably consult with the people when I do raise the tax. I would put several options out there. One of them would be uh, new cars. Uh, let's see, what else? Uh, the, I would not raise the tax for anything else. Uh, maybe tax or gasoline until we get to be in a green state. And those would be some of my options that I would post to the people and see which one they would be feel more comfortable with it. But I would not cut the budget. The crisis that we are facing right now is very significant. It, it's serious. And uh, people need help. There, believe me, I am uh, tracking a few homeless people and things are very, very bad out there. And uh, they need the, all the help they can get and uh, cutting the budget is not going to help them. 30 seconds. Okay, thank you so much. All right, uh, we are moving on to question number two. Jason, would you like to take that one? Thank you. That was my time. What is your plan for dealing with Washington State regressive upside down tax code? Will you lead on taxing large corporations and wealthy individuals? Do you support progressive income tax, a capital gains tax, a more robust estate tax and a tax on companies paying excessive compensations to uh, their employees. Okay, I'm gonna start at the very top. Yeah, 
you said it right, upside down taxes. Uh, uh, let's see. Uh, definitely would like to post to the people that tax uh, large corporations and the wealthy individuals to support progressive. Oh, I'm not going to support income tax. State income tax is not on my agenda. Uh, probably capital gains. Uh, more, uh, let's see, more robust ta uh, state tax to companies paying it. Uh, no, I just tax the rich and the uh, large companies, and I would not uh, favor income tax for the state of Washington. Did I answer your question? Yeah. Uh, let's see what else I can do here. Well, we have 51 seconds. Uh, in order to favor employees, I would probably if, uh, try to talk to large organizations to start a profit sharing program for all employees. That's going one of my agendas. But uh, definitely, definitely no state tax. I don't know how that uh, grab you guys, but uh, no, uh, no state income tax. And that would be my answer for that one question. Great, thank you. Um, we're gonna go to question number three and I have Mackenzie, uh, wait, you, yeah, Mackenzie, you're next. Okay, great, thank you. Uh, the third question is, what are your plans for making Washington State a leader on climate issues? Do you support a just transition to deal with climate change, such as the Green New Deal, which would bring carbon emissions down to zero in the next decade or two while investing in those most impacted who are often low income marginalized communities of color. I'm big with the, the green state of Washington. My plans are to challenge the people to help out to turn the state of Washington green within the next five years. And the plan is to, to get them to switch the from uh, from gas to alternative energy within five years and the plan would be to get them to pay 25 percent of the retrofitting of the vehicle and the organizations that are selling the, the cars to pay 25 percent for that and the state will take 50 percent however there was an issue with that plan what about the low-income people so the state would have to absorb this, uh, the 25% the from the people that cannot pay the retrofitting of vehicles. And let's see what else, where does go emission? That would be carbon decades. Uh, I definitely do not think that we should take more than 10 years. I know there is uh, a lot of saying out there that we'll get the state of Washington to be green in 50 years. I think that's a waste of time and probably professional politicians would like to do that. I would propose that we challenge the people to do that over the next five years. So I think I answered the question because I think I addressed the low income also. Great. Thank you. Thank you. Um, and now we're on question four. Brittany, would you like to go ahead with that one? The Trump administration has thrived on xenophobia against immigrants. What steps would you take to protect and uplift the immigrant community in Washington state, especially undocumented immigrants? What do you propose to do about private immigration facilities located in Washington state? Well, I'm gonna ask, I have a big problem. This is my, one of my biggest problems that I have because I'm all the way out there on the internet and I hear all this xenophobia against uh, people of color, immigrants. And I think that's unfair. Okay, one of my pet peeves is that we got to get rid of the for-profit uh, detention center and work around on how to help the immigrants to become citizens. Many of these people, many, most of them are taxpayers. There should not be any reason for us to be punishing them because they were not able to get their legal status up, uplifted or properly addressed. So I think we should address as a Washingtonians the, to fix the immigration laws locally in order to protect uh, those immigrants who are paying taxes and they do pay billions of tax dollars all over the country. 
So in order to for, for Trump to stand in his uh, little White House there and bash these people, it's unfair. I don't think the families should, should be uh, separated from the kids. If we have to, we can send the whole family together back and let them wait for the status of immigration to be approved, but not separate them. I think this is a crime in itself and should be addressed properly with our court of law. Uh, I think, uh, let's see, when Easley stopped uh, ICE for doing certain things, that's one thing I applaud about him, and I would probably do the same thing if they try abusing the power, when they try to separate it, mainly when they take the kids away, that makes me very angry. And I think that my time is up right now for that. Sorry if I got kind of uh, too uptight there, because that's one of the things that I, I cannot handle. We understand. Yeah, that's my time. Thank you. We understand. Uh, we are going to now go into our uh, follow-up questions, mm -hmm. and uh, the responses to those are one minute apiece. So, okay. Jeff, would you like to go ahead with your first with the first question? Sure. Uh, thank you for joining us, Doctor, and and thank you for for getting uptight about children being separated from their parents, I, I feel the same. Um, I was wondering, you've talked a lot about like what's part of your platform, what's not part of your platform, but I was wondering if you just tell us more about um, who you are, what you do for a living, or what experience either from a job or just life experience you would bring um, to the governor's office that would um, inform how you, uh, how you did the daily work of that job. Okay, okay, so I have uh, one minute to answer that question. Okay, uh, let's see, first of all, let's start with my education. I have a PhD in industrial organization psychology and it translates into management. According to the federal government, uh, anyone who wanna compete with me, I don't compete with anybody, I compete with myself all the time. That person would have to have 18 years of experience in the field to be able to compete with me for any job or any type of management skills. Now, I have more degrees after that, but uh, I don't have enough time. Uh, right now, I'm with the president of the local 1124 TSA officers. I stood by TSA officers uh, from December 2018 to February 2018 by myself, going to the media and uh, helping them not to quit their job and get them uh, more food. Uh, more, debt, uh, more cards with uh, money in it. And they were able to get over 2,500 uh, cards from passengers and unions and food for all food banks. I think it's over. Yes, that's your time. Thank you. Thank you. I think that's what I heard back there. <laughs> uh, does anybody have another follow up question? Mackenzie. All right, thank you for your time. Um, just a question, is there, or what are some things that uh, the governor has done during this crisis that you feel like you would have done differently? Can you please uh, rephrase that question? Sure, uh, what are some things that Governor Inslee has done during this uh, pandemic crisis that you have not, maybe, maybe you have not agreed with that you would have uh, done differently yourself had you been the governor, or how would you deal with those differently? Uh, he has done a lot of stuff that I do not agree with, but I only have one minute. So I'm going to address that in one minute. Uh, I would not have shut down the state the way he did. I would probably go onto the media, ask the, all the television stations to come back and that I have something to say. And I would tell the entire population, we have a crisis. We have issues, possibly a very dangerous virus. In order for me not to shut down the state, I would like you guys to do social distancing, the six feet, and wear masks whenever you are in a cloudy space, like supermarkets or clubs or whatever. And if you follow that, I would not shut down the state, but I would consult with people. I would not dictate to the people because people like to be part of the solution. They want to know that they mean something. Since they are the assets, not the governor. The governor should be listening to them. Right now, I think the shutdown has wasted a lot of the, our resources. 
that we're probably not going to be able to catch up in the next 10 years, but I will try that. Thank you, doctor. Yes, thank you. Um, are there any other follow-up questions? I have one, doctor. Um, so, sort of in that same line um, with the uh, COVID-19 uh, um, hitting our state and our nation and the world, uh, we do, there's a real possibility that we will be in a recession soon. Um, if that's the case, uh, how would you handle that as a new governor? Uh, it looks that way. <laughs> Uh, it's, it's out there because uh, it doesn't take anybody with a PhD to see that something big is coming. They don't need me to tell them that. Uh, ha, infrastructure is uh, it's a big thing on my agenda. How do I deal with that? I'll probably try to continue with my platform, expand the light rail to every uh, city that has 10,000 or more individuals. With that, I will generate more taxes without increasing taxes or opting into the state taxes. And what else would I do? Uh, hopefully, I would be able to, uh, hopefully I would be able to bring all the homeless population in-house within the next two years. Uh, let's see address the immigration, address that. Uh, that's a very tough one because I don't think if we run, if we go into recession, uh, it's gonna take uh, me and uh, several committee to solve that Washington problem. And I'm you, willing doctor. to develop as many committees as needed to address that situation when it does happen. And I hope it doesn't. Thank you. Thank you. Um, does anybody have any other follow-ups? We have about three more minutes to go, so we can take at least one more question. Any other follow-ups? Uh, I have one um, about, uh, women's rights. So, I mean, uh, how do you feel about, um, you know, the abortion issue? Can you rephrase that, please? Um, tell us uh, your stance on uh, abortions. And um, Oh, that's a big one for me there. And I'm not so sure if all of you is going to like what I have to say. I will never, ever dictate anything to anyone in the state of Washington. I think the women's body belong to them, not to the governor. Okay, I have a second one, but I think I'll do that when you give me my time to do that. Uh, there is two things that I'm not gonna do. One is telling a woman what to do with her body and the other one is violating the second amendment. And the reason I say that is because I am going to propose when I get in there that every gun that's sold in the state of Washington that must have a trigger lock to go with that weapon. And when that weapon is not in the presence of the person who is supposed to be carrying it, it must have that trigger lock on. So those are the two things that we'll never do. Violate the second amendment and tell a woman what to do with her body. It belongs to her. And I think it should be part of a constitution that nobody should tell anyone what to do with their body. I'm sorry if I extend that a little bit, but uh, I have a problem when people try to tell me what to do with my body. Great, thank you. Um, we have a, about, we're, 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 we're at 19 minutes. So if you would like to uh, go ahead and give a one minute closing uh, speech, you may. Okay, let's set that up. Let's see, what I need to do is uh, here. I'm gonna just uh, put all everything together, what I had to say, for instance, the abortion, I'm not gonna tell a woman what to do with her body. Immigration, we need to fix the immigration system because we don't have a good one here. There's no reason for us to be separating families from, from the children. And 
what's the other one? Green energy. I'm for turning the state 100% green. Well, let's say nothing is 100%. Let's say 99% green within the next five years. And I do have a plan for that. I will not violate the Second Amendment. And I have something else that I, I was probably thinking that you guys are going to ask, but you guys are asking me the question in a different way. Uh, what would you do in the state of an emergency? For instance, in a calamity, and this is where I'm going to prove to you that I will not dictate to the people. In case of a calamity, such as a volcano, eruption was Ten one, seconds. I would guide the people to seek a proper shelter within their community, report to the, the issue to my office ASAP, so I can guide them, can guide the emergency personnel to go to them. Thank you, doctor. That was my time. <laughs> was it? Thank you very much. I'm going to stop the video now.